Okay, so we will uh, so move on to the, the derivation what we have done last class. So we looked at in, in previous classes the ionization, the effect of ionization, uh, the how do we calculate the fraction ionized um, in, a, in, a, in a gas medium and then if used in a diatomic gas, molecular gas, so how the, the dissociation can influence uh, the ionization process because then uh, you will have another endothermic reaction which is actually happening. It should happen to supply the, the electrons and ions. Okay, so by dissociation and then ionization, and how the ionization fraction and dissociation change as a function of temperature. And then we derived an important equation which we will also see in this class as well to calculate the, the electrical conductivity or electrical resistivity of an arc. Okay, this is very important derivation because the heat generation is determined by the, the resistance to the motion of the charge carriers. Is not it? So, more the resistance, so obviously high heat, is not it? It is like in a, in a normal conductor, okay. So, if your resistance is high, so obviously you s collide or you uh, uh, dissipate more energy because of the mutual collisions will be much higher, is not it? Say we looked at the first equation to, to begin with is to balance the, the electrical charge okay of, uh, of an arc, is not it? The total electrical current of an arc, if you see that, so what do we do it? The, the electrical current of an arc is nothing but the ionic current and then electron current, is not it? So, electrons would travel from the cathode to anode, the ions will travel from anode to cathode, okay. If you provide resistance to this path, obviously that means that they are colliding to each other and they will drift after the collision and if they completely, if they are completely stopped, obviously that means that the entire energy will be dissipated there itself, is not it? That means that the resistance is so high, you will end up producing enormous amount of energy at that spot. So, by knowing how difficult the path of the electrons and ions, then we can also calculate how, what is the resistance of the arc. Now that determines the heat generation in principle, is not it? So, the deriving the, the electrical resistivity or electrical conductivity of an arc is extremely important because from that we can also calculate the heat generation, is not it? So, how do you conduct, a, how do you calculate the heat generated in, in a simple conductor? What is the formula? I square r, is not it? So, once you know the, the resistance of a conductor, obviously you can generate how much, uh, you can calculate how much heat is generated. Okay. In other words, in this case we are going to calculate the resistivity, resistivity of an arc because okay, that determines again the, how difficult the path of electrons ions in the arc. More, the diffi more difficult to the path obviously then the collision will be higher, is not it? Then what is the result of that? Then the, the, the heat generation will also be higher, is not it? So, that is why, that's why this equation is extremely important and we will use this derivation in, the, in various welding uh, perspectives. So, for example, if you want to calculate the efficiency, what is efficiency again? How much amount of arc energy is transferred to the work piece? Again, if you want to know the efficiency, then you need to know how much energy is actually generated, is not it? In the arc. So, then only you can calculate the efficiency of the process. So, we always use when you are doing a heat input calculations, we use the efficiency, but then efficiency should be calculated from these fundamental derivations. Okay. So, it is very simple derivation what I showed you how to calculate the electrical conductivity. So, what we have done, we just balanced the flow of ions and currents. So, if you add together obviously that is the electric current of an arc. So, now we can calculate individually J i and J e, okay. J i it is um, ampere per square meter, per square meter right, so per square area meter area. So, it is nothing but what you have done, the electrical, the charge of an electron and then number density of electron. Okay. Again, number density of electrons, how do you calculate? How do you calculate number density of electrons? From? No. From uh, the Saga equation. Okay. So, Saga equation will give you the fraction ionized, right? Is not it? So, fraction ionized, what is that? Amount, amount of, amount of electrons you generate or ions you generate, 1 minus electrons, is not it? So, any we can be calculated from the Saga equation. 
and then if you multiply it with the drift velocity, average drift velocity is extremely important, does not matter whether it goes this side or this side after a collision. So, the average is very important, okay. So, average drift velocity, if you multiply it with number density times the charge of electron, so that is the total ionic current, the to total electron current, sorry, is not it? So, now from this equation you can see that if the drift velocity is higher, that means that the collisions are lower. See, if velocity is higher, obviously current density will be higher. The electrons can easily move. So, then obviously you can also correlate the current generation will be lower, is not it? So, if a drift, drift velocity is higher, that means that the electrons are colliding to each other. Okay, or there will be a close to perfect collision in such a way that drift velocity upon collision is decreasing. That means that the energy generation will be much higher, is not it? So, that is the simple logic of this equation. So, when you say the drift velocity, again drift velocity can be calculated between the acceleration times the time between two collisions, is not it? So, that is what if acceleration is higher obviously. So, then the time between the collision will also be, will be higher or lower. If it is accelerating much faster that means that it is not colliding frequently, is not it? So, suppose if you want to calculate the average drift velocity, we need to multiply it with acceleration okay, times time between the collision, is not it? is not it? So, this is meter per second square times second to the meter per second that is the drift velocity, but acceleration how do you calculate acceleration? So, we will have to transfer this equation into the quantifiable entities, you, you cannot cal the calculate the acceleration of uh, the electrons or ions in arc medium, is not it? Similarly, the time between collision also is very difficult to find it out. So, we can convert that into more quantifiable, quantifiable variables. Okay, that is the purpose of transferring these two terms into the energy, the electric field and the thermal velocities and the mean free path that can be calculated from the basic equations, is not it? Right. So, now then we replaced the acceleration. So, how do we replace acceleration? Very simple. So, equation is F equal to ma, is not it? Right. And F is nothing but so, that is the, the electric field you apply, is not it? The electric field you apply times the charge, the elementary charge of an electron, okay. So, then this must be equal to the mass of an electron times the acceleration of the electron, the acceleration of the electron. So, now we can replace the, the acceleration of electron into by m, is not it? Yes. So, this equation we can replace the acceleration into the energy terms and mass terms which are quantifiable because E you apply, E is the one you apply the electric field in the circuit, mass of an electron it is known entity, is not it? So, now similarly we also derived another relationship for time between two collisions and time between two collisions how do you derive is the mean free path of an electron, okay. So, that is the average mean free path of an electron for a given temperature you can calculate that, is not it? Divided by thermal velocity, the average thermal velocity, right. So, average thermal velocity that is your the time between collisions, sorry, right. So, now you have relationship between seconds, meter, meter per second, meter meter cancels out, you have second. So, that is your time between two collisions. So, now we can calculate the drift velocity is nothing but you have E, E divided by M E, is not it? And then time is, time between two collision is nothing but L E divided by B E. Yes, it is simple right. Okay, now, we have a relationship for V e that is what I asked you to derive in the last class. The average thermal velocity 
of an electron is a function of temperature very simple relationship okay. So that is luckily all the fundamental physicists from uh, early 20th century they derived for us is not it okay we should be thankful for them. So V is nothing but thermal velocity is 8 Boltzmann by pi is not it. So now we can replace V with this equation. So now what will happen is E, E, L, E and then M, E times square root of 8 k t divided by M, E pi. So M, E goes inside into M square, M, E square right and M, E, M, E cancels out and then U, E becomes divided by 8 m e k t divided by pi yes it is clear. So now we have the equation for drift velocity of an electron right under a electric field right. So now if you use this to e in this equation now we have the electric current the current density by electrons <coughs> is not it. So, that will be so, so e times there are there is already another e right. So, it becomes e square n e number density of electron okay and then you are applied electric field and then L e is not it divided by square root of 8 m e k t by pi it is clear yes or no ok. So, now we have the, the relationship for the, the electron current density. So, the ampere per square meter similarly the same thing can also be derived for ion is not it and everything is the same. The same thing can be derived for ion as well. So, again the electron charge number density of ion the applied electric field mean free path of ion divided by square root of 8 mass of an ion k t by pi everything is same it is also fundamental particle it is a charged particle right is not it. The same derivation can also be derived for the ion density as well is not it you get the same charge carriers the velocity thermal velocity of a particle it is the same as an electron and if you look at these two equations okay the electron density or ionic density is fully determined by temperature is not it because the Ne and the Ni when the ionization is happening it is the same is not it number density of electrons and ions E is the same ok mean free path is more or less the same at a given temperature. Okay. So, the important factors that determine the field the, the electric current in the arc is temperature. The other important thing is here if you divide J i by J e so assuming that mean free path is the same and this will become sorry is not it yes or no yes. So, if you divide J A by J E because all of them are almost same assuming that mean free path is the same J A by J E equals to square root of M E by M I. So, 
Now we all know the M e is much, much, much less than M i because the mass of iron is an atom, close to an atom. Electrons compared to the, the, the ionic mass is negligible, is not it? So, if that is the case, then J must also be much, much bigger than the ionic current, is not it? According to this relationship what we derived, is not it? clear? So, we derived uh, the electron density and ionic density in an arc. The current density is inversely proportional to the mass, square root of the mass. So, if you divide J A by J E, obviously it must be equal to square root of M E by M I. We know that you know, the mass of an electron is much, 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 much less than the mass of an ion. Therefore, according to this relationship, J I the electron current must be much, much, much greater than the ionic current of an arc, is not it? So, that means that the entire current flow in arc is determined by only the electron current, right? So, that means that the entire heat generation is determined by the flow of electrons, is not it? So, we can safely neglect the ionic part. So, when you are doing calculations, because the mass of an electron is much really tiny compared to the an atom's mass, comparing you are comparing elephants and, and a small orange, is not it? So, if you look at this relationship, the entire current flow in arc is determined by the flow of electrons, right? So, we can safely neglect because of the mass effect, the ionic density can be safely neglected, <coughs> right? So, now we can derive, we can safely say that the electrical conductivity is, how do you calculate the electric conductivity from uh, the electron density is nothing but, suppose if you want to calculate the, the electrical conductivity sigma is nothing but the electron density density divided by the total electric field okay that means that j e divided by e so that's the conductivity right conductivity is nothing but J e that is electron density in an arc because J i the ionic density can be neglected because of the mass effect. Okay. So, you, you can you can do the calculation, but it will be 10 power minus few fractions phi 100 according to this equation. Okay. So, the, the electrical conductivity of an arc is nothing but J e divided by e. So, this equation if you divide by E, then E goes away, then this becomes sigma. So, that is the electrical conductivity of an arc. Uh, 1 by sigma is electrical resistivity. So, if you do reciprocate this equation, then it becomes electrical resistivity. Wow, happy. Now, we have R we can calculate now, okay. if you know the resistivity, obviously we can also calculate the resistance. If you know resistance, obviously we can calculate the voltage, is not it? If you know E and if you know voltage and current, we can calculate heat, is not it? That is what. So, this is how we calculate the heat generated in the arc. It is clear, is not it? Okay, good. We will look at the slide again. If you have any questions, please let me know. Right? It is clear. So, we will just 
quickly look at the derivation again. So, electrical conductivity of an arc, how do you derive that sigma? So, electrical current is we can assume that it is a total current, the electron current plus the ionic current. Electron would travel from cathode to anode and the ion would travel from anode to cathode. So, now we are deriving the equation, the deriving equation for the electron current and an ion current. The electron current is nothing but E times the number density and then drift velocity. Number density can be calculated from Saga equation because that gives the amount number of electrons percent, is not it as a function of temperature. And drift velocity we, we do not know. So, we will have to derive any, an expression for drift velocity. Okay, drift velocity is nothing but acceleration times the time between two collisions, is not it? Acceleration again we do not know. So, we will have to find some expression for that F equal to MA, F is here is the electric field you apply. Okay, so, that is times E the electric charge that gives the force, is not it? And force equal to MA. So, MA is nothing but force divided by mass, that is what here. Okay, the times time between two collisions. So, we do not know time between two collisions as well, right? So, that can be that can be converted into mean free path divided by thermal velocity, right? So, mean free path is L e by thermal velocity and that is the expression for the average drift velocity. So, once you know the drift velocity <coughs> and we also know that the thermal velocity is square root of 8 k t by m e pi, that is the average thermal velocity. So, now we have the predictable means of the expressions. Okay. So, we already converted all the variables into the predictable variables. So, now if you can replace the, th the diff thermal velocity into the square root of 8 k t by m e pi, then we have the expression for the average drift velocity. So, nothing but E times the field, the mean free path of an electron divided by square root of 8 m e k t by pi. So, now the electron current is E times N E times drift velocity, is not it? So, you replace U E with this expression, you will get the expression for the electron current in an arc. Okay, this is very simple derivation. Okay, so it is not even plus 2 physics. Good. So, similarly, we also derived for ion. We replace N E with N I, number density of ions. Okay, then the mean free path of ions, mass of an ion. Okay. So, assuming that the mean free path of ion and electron is the same, okay, so if you divide J e by J i, so obviously it becomes square root of M i by M e or other way around does not matter. Right? So, that is a basic expression understanding we can have from this derivation the understanding what we have is if we divide these two, obviously M i the ion mass is much much higher than electron mass. Okay? So, because it is an ion is, is an, you know, one electron less than an atom, okay? whereas an electron is, is nothing compared to an atom. So, the mass of an ion is much higher than the electron mass. So, obviously according to this derivation, if this is the case, Okay, the electron current will be much much higher than the ionic current. So, even if you use the total electric current J e plus J i okay, and this is negligible could be 10 power minus 23 or so, there is no point in using that. Okay. So, the entire current is determined by the J e, okay, the electron current. So, therefore, we always assume safely when you are doing the calculations for heat generation, the ionic part is neglected. So, we always use the electric current part, the electrons determine the heat generation that is rate controlling. Okay, it is good. So, we can always safely say that the electron current 
makes up the majority of our current. We can neglect safely the ion current. Okay, so once we know the expression now, the conductivity is current density, the total current density, where we can even still keep Je plus Ji, but again Ji is negligible, we can take it out by the field strength E. So, that is what conductivity of an arc. Okay, so, if that is the case, the electrical conductivity of an arc, so we give the expression for Je, the E goes out in Je and this is the expression to calculate the electrical conductivity of an arc and 1 by sigma is resistivity, right? That is it. So, now we can do the welding, right? So, we safely calculate the heat, okay? So now, we can ignite the arc and then we can calculate. But then there is one more trick before going to the welding process. Now, we have the heat generation, but that is transferred through conduction, convection, radiation, right? But now, we need to understand whether all the heat we generate, it is effectively transferred. Okay, so, then it is 100 percent efficient process, but it is never the case. Unfortunately, in most of the cases, we lose whatever heat you generate by this equation, okay, it is not transferred properly. So, now we need to have a balance. Suppose, if you calculate the, the arc energy, okay, so that is U conduction radiation u convection, right? That is what we saw in previous class. This we can calculate here, but then how much is transferred by conduction, convection, radiation? So, that determines the efficiency of the process. Okay? So, now we will see in subsequent slides how the conduction, convection, radiation happens in the arc. Okay? So, then in subsequently when you look at in each process the conduction, convection, radiation can be different. For example, in submerged arc welding we completely shield the arc by flux that means the radiation heat loss is almost negligible. Okay? In some processes we also melt this consumable and deposit to the base material like in GMAW process. That means that heat required to melt the consumable, it is again transferred to the work piece. <coughs> Whereas, in a, in a non-consumable welding process like GTAW, gas tungsten arc welding, whatever heat is used to heat the consumable or the electrode, it is not transferred, it is getting wasted, is not it? That means that efficiency goes down. So, each process based on these characteristics, the efficiency change. Okay? So, we will see one by one, when you are looking at the process, how we can use this equation to calculate the efficiency of the process. Okay? So, if you look at uh, the, uh, the electrical conductivity and we can calculate using this equation very beautifully. For example, this curve shows the electrical conductivity of an organ as a function of temperature. Okay? So, obviously, at lower temperature, you st are still ionizing, is not it? So, the ionization is still continuing and upon increasing temperature, the ionization saturates. That means that that means that Ne saturates, is not it? Upon increasing temperature sufficiently, so, so, obviously, the conductivity increases. So, once the temperature increases sufficiently, if the Ne becomes saturated, so then conductivity approaches at a constant value, right? It is clear, is not it? So, Ne is a function of temperature, Saga equation, and temperature determines Ne from Saga equation. Right? 
So, once you know that we can calculate the conductivity and if you reciprocate it becomes resistivity, is not it? So, once you know resistivity obviously you can calculate resistance and then I equal to again I is nothing but your E the field strength what is left is V we can calculate and then the entire heat generation is nothing but V by I uh, sorry V times I. So, now we have an expression to calculate the electrical resistivity of an arc. Yes, it's clear. Good from the fundamental physics.